Now that I have Studio One Three Professional open on my studio workstation and both the computer and my iPad are on the same Wi-Fi network, I see my computer listed as an available connection on the remote. Tapping on it will establish the connection. The first thing we see is the mix page and our mix console faders, which is indicated by the blue fader button on the left. There's a lot of functionality and information displayed on this one page. The name of the project that we're working in is permanently displayed at the very top of the iPad next to the Wi-Fi connection icon. Swiping left and right scrolls through the mixer and shows us all of the tracks in our current project. This corresponds exactly with the mix console on our main workstation screen, so we see all audio tracks and buses here. The main output is hard docked to the far right, just as in the Studio One mix console. We can adjust the levels of one or more faders, and as we do, the mute solo buttons above each respective track change to a numerical volume display, so we can see clearly the amount of gain or attenuation we're doing. This numerical level is also permanently displayed directly under the panner as well for constant reference. The same goes for the panner, which we can drag left or right as we like. Double tapping both the fader knob and the panner will reset each to the default center or zero position. I have some tracks in this project muted as we can see by the red mute status button on the left. Tapping this button unmutes all muted tracks so we can hear everything in our project. Tapping this again will return the previously muted tracks to mute status. If we want to mute multiple adjacent tracks at once, it's as easy as clicking on a mute button and swiping across multiple tracks. And again, we can toggle all of these on and off quickly with a single tap of the large mute button. The same applies for solo status. We can solo one or more tracks by tapping and or swiping, and these can be toggled on and off with one single tap of the yellow solo status button on the left. Underneath the mute and solo buttons are the record on and off button and the monitor enable button. These can be individually activated and cannot be swiped across so as to avoid accidental recording over audio or MIDI passages. We can toggle focus from each individual track by tapping on the corresponding name of each track at the very bottom of the mix console on the iPad. This is also reflected on our main studio workstation. Above the mute and solo buttons, you'll see the horizontal layout of all available tracks in our project, which are numbered accordingly. As we play our song, we can see the levels of each respective track shown inside the graphical display above each numbered track. And above that, we see a permanent timeline that scrolls as our project moves forward or backwards in time. By simply tapping and swiping left or right on the timeline, we can move forward or backwards quickly in our project. The permanently docked gray cursor in the center will always show us exactly which point in the project playback will occur. And as we approach our song end marker, the timeline will be blacked out past that. Whichever range we have our left and right locator set will appear as a lighter gray box within the top timeline. Our master fader volume is also always displayed along the top right of the iPad next to the speaker icon. So we have a permanent place in which we can watch our overall master output level. It's a good idea to familiarize yourself with all of the content that's permanently displayed here, since this is a screen you'll most likely be looking at quite often.